Hi, I'm talking to you today from my office studio, studios downstairs, wish you were here, love to share it with you. And I would love to walk you through a piece that I've been working on. Actually, I've been working on a whole series based on archetypes. And we're not really talking about archetypes today, although I'd love to talk about that anytime. It's one of my favorite topics. Today, we're specifically talking about how I made the piece and the backgrounds and textures, which are part of a new upcoming class that I have just opened enrollment for. And I wanted to give you an idea of the kinds of things we would be talking about in my class, but I also thought that if you're the kind of person who already has plenty of technique under your belt, you might just enjoy coming along with me in order to see how I put all of this together in the artwork that I create in order to make work that's distinctively my own. So let's start the screen share and I'll walk you through my process. So this is a piece which represents my saboteur. And of course that's not the focus, but that's the name of the piece. It's 21 by 10, 21 of course is the height, 10 is the width, that's how artists measure and describe their work. I mount everything I do, I always have for a real long time on synthetic craft felt because not only does it stabilize whatever I'm using, whether it be paper or fabric, it also allows me the opportunity to stitch into it later using either machine stitching or hand stitching. Believe it or not, if you're a hand stitcher, everything that I'm working on right now is going to be hand embroidered. And that means that I really need a substrate that's soft and accommodating for the stitch. And the synthetic craft felt, which goes by the name Eco Felt, is my felt of choice. So let me take you through the individual parts of this particular piece. The top square of the piece is printed on deli paper. If you're familiar with using a gel plate, jelly plate, several different varieties out there, brands out there, um, you'll be very familiar with what I'm talking about. But deli paper, for those of you who might not be familiar with it, is very, very thin. It's literally put in baskets where there are French fries and used to wrap up sandwiches. It's not wax paper. It's a completely different beast. It takes printing of all kinds really, really well because it's so thin. And so this particular print was made on deli paper, which comes in squares. And so this is a 12 inch square. The bottom portion of the composition of which you see here only a portion was originally the drop cloth on my printing table. And I work the printing table, especially if I've got a brayer out, I'm getting paint on the table all the time. Sometimes I tear up pieces of the drop cloth, which is really an old cotton sheet, which makes it equally accommodating for stitching. I use that as the, I tear it into pieces and that becomes part of my artwork. And so I love keeping the recycling circle going all the time so that I have very little waste. I use my own sheets when they're worn out enough that I need new ones. We had an Airbnb for a while, so we had plenty of sheets that we used for a few months and then replaced. But I'm also a fan of going to the, the local op, op shop or thrift shop and looking for single color sheets that I can use first, first most as drop cloths and then later potentially as art. The deli paper and the drop cloth cotton were fused to the craft felt that I mentioned before when I knew I was finished printing. Sometimes I can go ahead and add additional printing after it's been, after whatever it is, the substrate has been fused to the felt. But in general, I like to get the printing done prior to doing the fusing in case I have to get the fabric wet again. And of course, when I fuse it to the felt, it makes it possible, as I said, to add hand or machine stitching and beading and that sort of thing. For this top portion that was the jelly plate, I used a variety of homemade stamps and what is referred to as a colograph to print the deli paper. These included window screen, cardboard, and other assorted materials. And in the new course, I'll show you exactly what I did every step of the way so that you can make all of these stamps and collagraphs yourself. 
The white cracks you see in this particular print are places where the deli paper creased when I positioned it on the gel plate. This would be considered an error in terms of how other people see the work, but I really liked the effect and it was appropriate for the particular subject I was working with. So I kept the, the piece in order to turn it into the print that you're looking at right now. Now, the stamps and the collagraphs can also be used directly on paper and fabric, and they can be used for rubbings. So the fact that this was on a jelly plate is rather incidental. There are lots of ways to use the tools, and I'll talk about all of them and demonstrate each one. On the right side of the composition, you see a dictionary page and I glued it to the deli paper after the fact. So I did all the printing and then I added handmade paper. You can see that as kind of the grid and the dictionary pages. And I use a dry glue system when I do all of this uh, uh, sort of assembling because that way the paper won't warp. And as I mentioned, to complete this side, you can see that handmade lace paper extending over onto the heart, if you look closely, and then the gold leaf that I added as the very last step. If you look at the bottom half of the composition in this detail, you'll see if you notice that the green printing that's at the top there, kind of in the middle, that is still the deli paper. And so there's a demarcation line where the paper meets the cloth. The bottom rectangle that you see there at the, the bottom of the detail was created using layered stencils, again on the gel plate, all those can, although those can also be used on fabric. And there were also hand-drawn marks on the gel plate, and I'll share four or five different tools that you can use in order to make hand drawings on the gel plate, which is taking it way beyond the more simplistic approaches to the gel plate that you might be familiar with. Now you'll notice the irregular lines across the middle of the detail shot, and those were made using one of the stamps. The blobs and the dots that you see there, those are incidental features. They were on the drop cloth when I tore it into pieces in order to sort of play around and audition it as a background for this piece of art. And I really love that sort of incidental information because I think it adds character. Now the texture that I used to blend these two sections together was made using prints literally of bubbles. Before I began this series, I thought about what the visual vocabulary would be. And what I mean by that is that to me, the marks mean something and that helps me compose and helps me decide what to use and what to incorporate in the artwork that I create, even if it doesn't mean anything in particular to the viewer. Here's another detail shot, a real close up of the left side of the composition. You can see more dictionary page sort of running down the middle there. And you can obviously note the gold leaf, but then you can also see what's referred to as dendritic painting or printing. And it was given that name because it looks like tree branches. And it's a sort of a mirror image effect that you can do. And there are some tips that'll make it easier to accomplish. And of course, I'll share those in the class. So that's my saboteur. And those are the processes that I will be sharing, just a few of them, there are many, many more. I counted them all up as I was writing the handouts and the notes that go along with the online course. And really when you tally this all up, it's 30 different ways to go about printing and adding these various elements in ways that will make your own work distinctive. So I hope you've enjoyed this little preview and I hope you'll think about joining me because everything I teach is fueled by love and joy. And I want to share that with you. I love what I do. Brings me great joy. I want that to come to you as well. Hope I'll see you there.